Imagine an ant colony. There are a bunch of individual ants, each doing work to help support the colony. One ant is foraging for food, another is stacking sand on top of the mound, there's that one that's just not pulling his weight despite everybody else doing their job. Each individual ant seems to be making decisions about what it should be working on. Those decisions aren't complicated in themselves. After all, an individual ant can only do so many things. However, it isn't until you take a step back that you notice something even more interesting about the ant colony. The colony itself is alive. It has properties that can't be explained by the decisions of the individual ants. It moves as a whole, adapts to the outside world, goes on benders in Kaaba, and has a life cycle almost like a living, breathing organism. Why is that? If an ant colony is full of individual ants making their own independent decisions, how is it organizing itself into a predictable and coordinated system? Think about the fact that without a government, without Congress, without any centralized power, an ant colony is able to create stuff like this. The paths branch and lead to many fungus gardens and rubbish pits. Which is kind of incredible when you think about it. Yeah, really cool. All right, Ben, can we just wrap up this ant talk and get to the Bill Huang memes and losing money in the stock market already? Yes right after we talk about this. What is a complex adaptive system? And how can it help you predict the stock market, the crypto market, and the whatever this guy is screaming about market? Starting in 1870, wolves in Yellowstone National Park were hunted by park employees in an attempt to eradicate all predators from the park. The idea being that by removing the top predators, the ecosystem as a whole should thrive. By 1926, the last wolf pack of Yellowstone had been killed. Fast forward to Yellowstone in 1995. Deer everywhere. Deer around every corner, deer destroying the vegetation, deer fucking on the path as you were trying to walk around. Recognizing that this deer fuck fest simply wasn't sustainable. Yeah, that's a, that's a sentence I never thought I'd say. The U.S. government realized that in order to control the deer population, the proper course of action would be to release more wolves into the park. Wolves, being the natural predators of the deer, would help regulate the population and thus rebalance the ecosystem. So in 1995, 14 wolves were released into Yellowstone. However, over time, something really interesting started to happen. As the wolf population grew, deer started to avoid certain areas of the park. The riverbanks and valleys that had been destroyed by overgrazing deer began to regenerate. Beavers came back to the rivers. There was an explosion of mice, hawks, foxes, and bears. One tiny adjustment in the system's conditions caused a profound change. However, something even more remarkable happened. As trees regenerated along the riverbanks, their roots stabilized the soil, protecting against erosion, narrowing the channels, and in some cases, is quite literally changing the path of the river. So you're saying that bringing 14 wolves into Yellowstone changed the actual path of the rivers? How many edibles did you eat before researching this? Absolutely zero. Only a few. But how does this relate to the financial gambling market? Yeah, there was that Wolf of Wall Street guy, but I didn't know he got released into Yellowstone. Let's think about the example of the wolves. I can tell you exactly what a wolf does. It looks for food, eats, sleeps, drinks pints with its wolf friends on Friday. That's basically the extent of its life. Yeah, there's some howling, some random walking around, but in essence, a wolf's entire existence isn't made up of any incredibly complicated decisions that we couldn't predict. Okay, so if that's relatively predictable, let's just add the deer fuckfest into that equation. After all, we can predict the actions of a deer fairly easily too. And if we can predict the deer, we can also predict X, Y, and Z that should give us a complete view of the system. We know what deer do. They eat grass. They, uh... <sighs> they eat quickly. Then later, they cough up food and chew it again. They, they do whatever this is. Let's just say we can predict the actions of a deer fairly well, with around 70% certainty. The problem is that with each degree we remove our prediction from those very precise starting conditions, things get significantly more complicated and unpredictable. You're making a prediction based on a prediction, based on an assumption, so you can even change up the word if you want, but with each prediction you make, you're becoming more and more uncertain. Is it starting to make sense why economic theory doesn't actually work to predict anything? Why the degenerates of Wall Street bets would rather listen to a gecko for their financial advice than look at a 10k. Well, I'm here to offer a solution. Not a good one, but a solution nonetheless. Think about the most basic economic model of the stock market. Every independent degenerate has only one goal, to make as much money as possible. But this is where the paradox arises. You can only buy a stock if someone is selling, a counterparty, probably an institution. 
The same institution that sold you those 20% out of the money calls expiring in three days. Why the fuck would you buy those? See, at least I know when I open Robinhood that I'm making a donation to Wall Street. <laughs> That money's better spent in their hands. You know, on another vacation home, trip to Indonesia. I didn't even want to eat this week. I'm dieting. Dying. Let's use Microsoft as an example. What is actually causing this to go up and down, theoretically? There's some institutions, some funds, and some poor people. They all have the same goal. To buy high, sell low. Actually, that's just the goal of the poor people. Buy low, sell high. Breaking news, Bill Gates is getting divorced. Let's just pretend that he's still the CEO because it's funny. The institutions see this. They look at their models, talk to some insiders, and consult the Asian quant making half a million dollars per year. He priced in the divorce 10 months ago, before Melinda Gates even priced it into her mind. He used satellite imagery to track Melinda's recent behavior, then built a linear regression model that recognizes this behavior as multiple standard deviation irregularities from Melinda's historic movement patterns. He then consulted multiple behavioral psychologists as well as Microsoft insiders and came to the conclusion that there was turmoil in the relationship and divorce was a likely outcome. Then there's you. You're fairly certain the market hasn't priced this in yet. After all, the news just came out a few hours ago. It's only a matter of time before someone else sees this investment. We have to act now. So what is actually moving this price? People with different levels of information, different bias, different risk tolerance. We're trained to think in a very linear fashion. Science, math, and other useless things behave in this way. Stonk market doesn't behave this way. It follows completely different rules. A perfect understanding of the individual parts doesn't automatically convey a perfect understanding of the whole system's behavior. It's not linear. There are four big ideas we can use to understand stock market complexity. The you won't principles. That's not like a, a guy's name or something, I just named them that because you won't actually use them in any practical sense. The ants. Going on a bender in Cabo. That's aggregation. Each one has a narrowly defined set of tasks for itself. I'm gonna pick up this piece of sand, I'm gonna go stack it on top of that giant mound, that's my life. However, at the system level, we can see how through all of those interactions, something much more complex emerges. An adaptive and organized system. Through thousands of individual tasks playing out over and over again, unpredictable properties arise. Emergence. Why is it so hard to beat the market? Because you're fighting an ever-evolving, learning enemy. Individuals within the system are constantly drawing from their environment and trying to understand their environment. That includes the Asian quant, who's a lot smarter than me, a lot richer than me, and just in general is a lot better than me in basically every way. Let's say you have a system that allows you to consistently predict stock market corrections. You do what any self-respecting capitalist does and take a page out of Bill Huang's book. Why not leverage to the tits and deep out-of-the-money puts to take full advantage of this opportunity? It might work, for the first few times, but how rich can you really get before others start to catch on? After all, thousands of people are monitoring the volume of those contracts, and demand for options up or down the chain increases implied volatility. Complicated financial formula fucks you quicker than you think, just take my word for it. You might be able to predict the unpredictable, but by predicting the unpredictable, the predictable just became predictably unpredictable. We're back at square one again. Economics is actually a Greek word made up of two parts. The first part, eco, means just fucking do astrology instead. The second part, no, we're still gonna try to do this despite it never working. This is the actual Greek root of the word. We think the model of our world should be linear. This makes sense with most of what we know about math and science. If I can predict what degenerate A, B, C, D, and E will do, shouldn't the sum of their actions be equally predictable? Yes, it should. So it is. Not exactly. When I drive around blasting lights by Ellie Goulding in <clears throat> this theoretical fake world where I actually do that, the car moves according to the laws of physics. It's completely predictable, deterministic, linear. The car accelerates according to an equation. The car experiences friction according to an equation. The car has all the maintenance lights on but never gets serviced according to an equation. We're very used to this idea that things should have a clear and predictable cause and effect. Understanding cause and effect is critical in controlling the world around you. It's how we've built civilization. Unfortunately, this isn't the case with the stonk market. The non-linear nature of the market suggests that large-scale changes can come from tiny inputs, and it's impossible to trace those large-scale changes back to their initial cause. 
Think about momentum trading, an entire branch of trading devoted to capitalizing on the mechanics of the system without any regard for the actual function of the system. Trends are self-reinforcing. Think about this cycle. Tim Cook unveils the Apple car. It's better than anticipated. Institutions buy lots of Apple shares, making the price go up. Momentum algorithms pick up on this price movement and start buying shares. The retail degenerates see this, post about it in Wall Street bets, and get jacked to the tits in deep out-of-the-money options. This out-of-the-money option buying increases gamma all the way up and down the option chain. Higher gamma means market makers have to buy more shares to stay adequately hedged against risk. And the cycle continues, leading to a feedback loop of pure and utter degeneracy. The efficient market hypothesis suggests that there's no way to consistently achieve superior trading results. Risk and reward are perfectly symmetrical, giving all investments an expected value of zero. Not to be confused with my Robinhood account, which also has an expected value of zero. This is like someone giving you a dice and saying if you roll a 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, I'll give you $10, but if you roll a 6, you give me $50. If you're like me, who's taken multiple incredibly high-level statistics classes, you think, Yes. This idiot doesn't realize that I have a 5 in 6 chance to make money, and only a 1 in 6 chance to lose money. I'm gonna be rich. However, as I continue to roll the dice, reality sets in. I'll hover between slightly profitable and slightly unprofitable for all of eternity, making the value of the game approximately zero. So, you're saying there's no hope, right? The market is a complex adaptive system with no cause and effect that's simultaneously somehow incredibly efficient with quants from Wall Street and space pricing in every individual photon hitting the Earth and how those photons translate to local weather patterns correlating to fluctuations in the wheat futures market. You think NASA wants to go to space? Goldman Sachs has bases on the moon where senior analysts are pricing in each lunar asteroid impact and how the moon's additional mass affects the tidal forces altering salmon migration so they can efficiently price the Atlantic Salmon Futures market. For just one dollar per month, you can buy Ben Ramen and Colt 45 to help him survive the winter. Or for just five dollars a month, you can watch me donate all of your money to Wall Street through a brand new brokerage account. You'll be able to see all the donations I make and read the analysis that I plagiarize from Seeking Alpha. You probably shouldn't give your money to any investor on the internet, and that is financial advice. But if you want to support the channel, inverse all my trades, and more importantly, you know, help your boy get paid, the link is down in the description. Please give me your money. Where were we again? Right, the Atlantic Salmon Futures Market. The market being perfectly efficient, there being no hope, but that's not how the market works. Right? Remember at the beginning of the pandemic when Zoom rallied thousands of percents? Except, that's not Zoom. This is Zoom. That Zoom is a Chinese company that's been out of business for years. The SEC actually had to stop trading because of the confusion. A perfect example of rational investors allocating capital to price assets efficiently. <coughs> Goldman Sachs may have a base on the moon, but they also have to play by more complicated rules. Portfolio mandates, liquidity, compliance with the feds, maybe, sometimes. Okay, so maybe the market isn't entirely efficient, but what about complex emergent properties with no discernible cause? How the fuck am I supposed to beat that? I wouldn't have been able to predict that wolves would change the paths of rivers. Maybe after taking peyote, but what, now I'm supposed to take that every time I want to buy some Apple shares? Okay, no problem. But I'm happy to tell you that there is a solution. It's not incredible. First, diversity of opinion means efficiency in a public exchange. I'm saying public exchange instead of stock market because you can really apply this to anything. When people are challenging each other's ideas, there's less room for inefficiency to rise. This makes sense when you really think about it. Degenerate A and B both think they're right and want to prove one another wrong. It's egotistical, fueled by testosterone, Adderall, and greed. The things that make the world go round. Now think about thousands of people all trying to do this at the same time. Even though each individual may not have perfect knowledge, they're constantly reevaluating their position, adjusting based on other arguments, and adapting to the most relevant information. What does that lead to? Incredibly efficient, well-priced stocks that offer little opportunity to you and I. However, knowing this tells us something interesting about where opportunity does exist. If diverse opinions create efficient markets, what might create an inefficient market? Example A, the housing market will never go down. It's rock solid, invincible. Example B, GameStop is a dying company. The brand is stale. They bought my used copy of GTA for $3 of store credit. Look at the short interest. There's not a single person on planet Earth that thinks this company is going to survive. 
Monkeys that all share one opinion are dangerous. Forget the stock market for a second, just on a human level. Basically every major tragedy throughout history can be attributed to this. This is why we've come to value free speech so much. But to bring it into a more serious topic, the stock market, your investment portfolio, the biggest tragedy of them all. People who all share one opinion tend to introduce all kinds of bias into their thinking. And sometimes, that gives rise to big opportunities. Being greedy when others are fearful, and fearful when others are greedy. But what does that even mean? I get the idea in theory, but so what? Now I'm supposed to start betting against Amazon? Most people think that company's pretty invincible. Because I actually want to show you how you might use this in some kind of a practical way, let's talk about GameStop. Who could have predicted how the GameStop play would unfold? Absolutely no one. It's a perfect example of small inputs leading to chaotic system level changes. It's non-linear. Think about the emergent properties of the GameStop fiasco. One example being people putting GameStop on billboards around the country. Now as an interesting thought exercise, try to think about what actually caused this. You can try to reason deductively and say, well, people bought billboard space after reading things on Wall Street Bets. Why were they reading things on Wall Street Bets? Well, because a lot of new people joined the community. Why did a lot of new people join the community? Well, because more mainstream attention was brought to it. You get the point. But which one of these levels caused the emergent phenomenon of GameStop billboard in Times Square? Absolutely no one fucking knows. It could be just one of these events, any combination of them, or something completely detached that we don't even recognize. What if the initial GameStop due diligence was never posted on Wall Street Bets? What would have happened to the GameStop billboard in Times Square? No one knows, no one will ever know, so I'll shut up about it. There's another incredibly important lesson we can pull from GameStop. In retrospect, that was a really great opportunity. I hate saying that so much. It's like people who say, yeah, you know, I could have been in the NBA, but I just decided not to. And you gave that up for an assistant shift lead position at Subway. Interesting. Knowing what we know about complex adaptive systems, we can recognize that when large groups of people all have the same opinion, inefficiency arises. With GameStop, you can see this reflected in the short interest. This isn't to say that the overwhelmingly bearish sentiment around GameStop was completely incorrect. In fact, it was probably very well deserved. However, with such an incredibly pessimistic outlook, it may not take a big change to completely shift that narrative. Not every story turns into a GameStop. Most will go the other way. However, asymmetry between risk and reward means if you're willing to roll the dice enough times, eventually the law of averages is going to carry you to the moon. And where might you find that asymmetry? In places where the masses can't fathom how they'd possibly lose. So maybe there is hope for us. Probably not, but maybe. Will any of this abstract theory help to predict anything in real life? I wouldn't count on it. Will I take my own advice to help manage risk and outsize returns? I wouldn't count on it. Will I not blast lights by Ellie Golding in my car because that was just theory and not actually anything that happens in real life ever? 